Hello. For this short webinar, we will be going over some fun facts about the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, short for NASA. This presentation will get you comfortable with some of the most famous and well-known facts about NASA and other relevant information about space and the aerospace field. Let us get started. What does the Capacity Building Program, or who does the Capacity Building Program work with? To begin with, the Capacity Building Program at NASA partners with hundreds of domestic and international organizations. Some of the organizations you may have heard of, such as Groundwork USA, the EPA, which stands for the Protection Agency, and so forth. The partnerships we've developed with, we have developed with local, regional, state, federal, and international organizations are in, in, instrumental in increasing the use of Earth observations and putting these resources into the hands of people around the world. These partnerships help bridge environmental gaps and knowledge about Earth's changing climate and promote more open source methods and collaboration in the applied sciences field of Earth observations. What was the recent satellite launch? On November 21st of 2020, the, Europe the U.S. European Sentinel-6 satellite was launched. The spacecraft will begin a five and a half year prime mission to collect the most accurate data on global sea level and how our oceans are rising in response to climate change. The mission will also collect precise data of atmospheric temperature and humidity that will help improve weather forecasts and climate models. You will most likely get the opportunity to use this data by NASA's worldview too. How many satellites orbit our planet? Space junk, a very common conversation that many people have worries about because there are nearly 6,000 satellites circling our tiny planet. A satellite is an object that moves around a larger object. There are, there are artificial and natural satellites. A natural satellite is our moon, and examples of artificial satellites are the satellites NASA launches into space like Landsat. About 60% of those are defunct satellites, space junk, and roughly 40% are operational. However, although space agencies like the European Space Agency's Agency have plans in trying to mitigate some of the harms in collecting space junk that orbit around the Earth, because space is so huge, there isn't a huge risk in continuing to launch satellites, CubeSats, and more into space. Just because our galaxy is so huge, it's unlikely for objects that orbit the Earth to collide with each other. What is Earth observation? Earth observation is gathering is the gathering of information about planet's, planet Earth's physical, chemical, and biological systems. It involves monitoring and assessing the status and changes in the natural and man-made environment. Examples um, of Earth observation that typically are common are, are commonly aware of is there um, is bird watching. So a bird watcher's note on bird sightings, numerical uh, measurements taken by a thermometer, wide wind gauge, ocean buoy, altimeter, or semiseograph. Photographs, radar and sonar images, analysis of water and soil samples, and then lastly, process information such as maps and forecasts. All of these are examples of Earth's observation. And a simple uh, example can be just viewing uh, the changing climate in your backyard, looking at the sky, looking at the clouds, and observing any changes that you see throughout the day is an example of an Earth observation. Do you need to be in space in order to monitor Earth's changing climate? Nope. We have many online platforms, tools, documentation, and more to monitor and collect data about any environmental topics. And we will actually show you how. Here below is NASA's worldview. And this is an example of what we're going to be using throughout uh, the trainings. And here's another uh, website called the GLOBE program where you can be active in collecting real-time data collections on the ground and even retrieve data sets that are already available on their website. So a lot of the platforms that we have are open source and you can involve yourself in Earth observation as well. How to understand different colors in a color infrared aerial photo photograph. So there are uh, many Many examples, um, one example that I picked was from the USGS, um, and here are different colors um, that are taken by satellites that showcase different environmental trends. So live vegetation is usually seen as uh, with red tones, so if you look at here, 
you see a lot of red tones and it's pictures of vegetations. Um, and then barrel soils, shades of white, blue, or green is mostly agriculture. So here is an example over here on the first image. Man-made features, and those are basically tones that relate to materials with which they are made of. So asphalt roads, for example, dark blue or black, gravel or dirt roads are lighter colors depending on their comp composition. And clean concrete roads are light in tone. And then lastly, water. Uh, usually that's represented by shades of blue varying in nearly uh, black. So clean, uh, clean water to very blue. And that's increasing amounts of sediment. So an example of that is in San Diego that I took, um, that I found a screenshot of by USGS on the bottom corner. Um, is very close to the ocean and there's a lot of uh, Bay, um, bay, our bases around San Diego, so you can see how uh, blue is represented in showcasing a lot of the water um, components around San Diego's bay. Some of the takeaways. The takeaways we learned throughout this slide is learning more about the capacity building program, so basically the functionality of remote sensors and their benefits, we learned a little bit about Earth observations. And then lastly, we got an example to see how we can analyze satellite imagery through color. One last thing. Where, where is this in the world? Before you answer, just take a look and see what you, what you notice. And then here it is. This image shows cloud streets when different warm temperatures of air interact with each other, creating rolling cylinders of, of air. It was taken on November 16, 2019 by Terra on MODIS. The cloud covers cover the eastern, uh, eastern United States, including Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York, and Pennsylvania. Well, that looks to be our final fact in this presentation. I hope you learned and gained some useful and entertaining information about NASA, the aerospace field, and more. Continue to strive and learn more about NASA and all the space centers and space agencies that exist today. You are the future of what will lead to greater scientific innovation, whether it be for space or our planet. Good luck and Godspeed.